Hey, it's Michelle Martinez with Dive Deep SoCal Bible Studies, and today we are speaking about Assyria's arm of flesh. This is going to go with our studies that we've been talking about with the false leaderships. Um, go back, watch Broken Reed Leadership and False Leaders Out to Dry. Those are the last two studies. So I want to go ahead and start with King Ahaz in 2 Kings 16. And he was a young king, but he did things that were an abomination to God. It says that he was detestable in the things that he would do. Detestable practices of the nations uh, was one of his crimes because he was offering children to the god Moloch. And this was that story that we did back, um, oh, I don't know, maybe about six or seven months ago about the Valley of Hinnom. And um, this was where they would have um, the statue raised and in, in, in the fires and they would get the arms um, red and hot, the statue red and hot with, with the flame and they would put the children um, on, in the arms of this god of the statue um, and they would burn to death and they would be offerings for the family for the year. Um, and we are seeing that this king, this is the king of Jerusalem, was taking part in this and he actually offered his own son and they would play the drums so very loud that it would sound like a joyous party. And what they were doing was they were hiding the screams and cries of the burning sacrificing of the children so that the parents would not turn and change their mind after hearing these blood curdling screams of children being sacrificed before that God. Um, so we are seeing this false leadership um, and how it was a detestable thing that did not go against the ways of the Lord. Um, and we're going to go ahead and go in more into um, Assyria's arm of flesh because we see um, that there was a problem with Assyria a long time ago um, in the history. If, if he would have looked back, he would have seen um, that they don't win and that they were trying to say that Assyria's arm was greater than God's. And if you go in um, to, let's go into 2 Chronicles 32, it says, with him, Assyria's king, um, is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord God to help us, to fight our battles and to be on our side for the battle is his. So we're seeing that if um, he would have looked into his past, into his history, or if he would have known that Assyria wasn't good then, Assyria is not good now um, as he is starting to do business with them because what he ends up doing is instead of going to the Lord, going to the altar of the Lord, he reaches out to a, to an arm of flesh and he offers the silver and the gold of the temple of the Lord and to the, and to the king of Assyria for his guidance and his help in taking over Damascus. And we see that when he's trying to take over Damascus, that he was not strong enough to do it himself. He did not go to God for guidance. So he builds this altar um, and he takes it from the form of the king of Syria. So he sees what the king of Syria has done with these treasures that he has given him. And when he goes, um, he takes note of it and he makes a, bl a blueprint of this altar that was in uh, Damascus and he sends it into his high priest. This is the king of Jerusalem, send it to the high priest and they remake the temple of the Lord. They begin to move the furniture of the Lord in the house of God and they begin to move the most important items. They move the basins where the priests will atone themselves, where they will wash for sacri after sacrificing. They will move the aisle of where um, when you would walk in, there would be a walkway that would go um, an entryway into the temple. They would move the wash basin, which is the sea. Um, it was a brazen molted bowl and it would have a mass um, of water in it. And this was called the sea and they would move that and take that. So they have taken and moved around the temple and all of these things that are a necessity and are the essence of God. These are the bowls where there would be a molted bowl. This would be full of what is called the sea and it would be the waters where God would um, have the men atone for the temple. And they would be moving the canopy. Um, and the canopy is the covering of God. That is 
a representation of our God. Um, he canopies with us. That's why he says when he sends Jesus to tabernacle amongst us, that tabernacle, that is that canopy. So we're seeing that he removes the canopy from the temple. He's moving the basins. He's moving um, anything that has to do with the water and the overflow of the water. So it says that they that he takes the molten sea, the bowl, and he places it um, off of the backs of these 12 bulls that were made of bronze, how God had them. Um, I'll show a picture of that right now. And he took those uh, that bowl right off the top there and he would set that down onto a stone floor. So he also removed the portion of the overflow. So you see that there is an area where if water would stir up out the top, it would go over and the water can be used. Um, and that would be the overflow. So he had taken away the water um, overflow and the bulls that were carrying it and set it onto the stone, but away from the entrance. So see, God had it directed that it would be right in the entrance before they would get um, into the temple, that there would be a washing area. And he, um, it has moved it. It says over to the uh, to the west side, I believe it said. Um, I think it said that he moved it over to the west side. Um, so it was moved out of the area uh, where you would walk, even for remembrance, to wash. Um, so he's taking away these things that God wants us to have. Um, and that was part of that old covenant that you needed to do things in a certain order. And there was a cleansing process. So he's taking away the atonement. Um, and we are going into a season of atonement here. We are going into the new Jewish new year is here, almost, almost here. We are on day six of 40 days of favor, and um, that is a time for repentance, for freshness, for returning. Um, that is a time for the new year, for the new jubilee. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go um, really quick. I want to go into um, one thing about Damascus when we were talking about how um, he was getting help and they and he gave the silver and the gold from the temple into the hands of the king of Assyria for him to save him and that they used the silver and the gold there in Damascus. Well, what they did was when they went into the city of Damascus, they took um, all of the treasures and all their things in the city of Damascus when it was plundered. Um, but I want you to go back, go back real quick into um, 2 Kings 8, because there you will see that God knew what was going to happen um, in 16. He knew what was going to go down in Damascus. And he pulled out and gave to Elijah 40, 40 camel loads full of everything that was good in Damascus. So we are seeing that God is taking his things out, that God is ready for the war, that God knows what our, what the battle is and what, what's going to come. Um, and he knows how to save. He knows how to recover. He knows how to protect and hide, and he knows how to bring it back. Um, so we're seeing that even though, yes, there was a plundering and the city was taken over at that time, we're also seeing that before God had taken 40 camel loads. I mean, that is a lot. And it says that everything good was taken out of Damascus in that 40 camel loads. So, um, one thing I really wanted uh, you guys to hear is get ready for the 40 camel loads. Get ready because years ago, he has already pulled back. He has already pre-taken. He's already got things set up um, for, for what he's doing for you and your victories for him. So we are seeing that the enemy um, can try to take. He can take for a little while. There's a certain allowance of things that he can have. Uh, God always pays back and always in times. He always uh, multiplies what has been taken. But I want to stop right there for today. I want you to know God loves you. Have a very blessed rest of your weekend and to remember to dive deep into the things of God.